Hi folks, welcome back to the B29 restoration project. So here we are, we are uh, actually working on getting the root of the, the plywood riv here on the horizontal stabilizer stubs installed. And what we need to do for this, is we actually need to, uh, we need to get the rib aligned, the incidence properly set, even though it's just square the incidences matters in this instance because we are going to use it to actually determine where our wing tube sockets are going to go. So here on the other side have already done. It's just kind of tacked in place here. Which you can see we've got our plywood stub piece or plywood rib blank that is just tack glued and we have the holes for the tube sockets to go in. Uh, one unfortunate thing is this rear tube has to go between the vertical stabilizer rear spar and then a solid carbon rod that acts as the torque tube and push rod for the rudder and these basically go right here and this tube is just hitting the back side of the uh, the vertical stabilizer leading it or trailing edge so you can see I've got a Robart incidence meter here on the wing stub or the stab stub. I'm gonna remove this. We'll transfer it to the other side. And this will be what we'll use for the reference. The airplane has been blocked up on some foam blocks and it's been leveled side to side and forward and back. The incidence on the stab should be zero. Right now it's not perfectly at zero. It's at about half a degree positive, which is close enough. Now here on our rib blank, you can see I've got vertical lines drawn on the outside edges of the holes. These will be used to help us align it up to the edges of the plywood spars that are already here. So you can see here, I have a center line etched on there. I should have etched these at the same time, but I didn't think about it in the moment. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the other side. I'm gonna measure how much distance is between the trailing edge of the stab and where it is positioned here. That way we get a forward and aft location that is accurate. And what I am seeing right now is it is about 8.30 seconds. Yep. So I'll make a mark here on a quad piece here. And that will be the very trailing edge location of this. And then what we will do from this point on is I will tack glue it here at the back. And then I will use an additional incidence meter to set the incidence of the rib blank. rib blank here put in place got tack glued here at the trailing edge the leading edge and then again here in the center now what we're ready to do is we're ready to uh, start cutting out the tube sockets the holes for the tube sockets in order to do that well this you would like to use the drill bit or something the size of the tube that you're the tube socket you're going to use no, excuse me but unfortunately most of the time the tube sockets are a really weird oddball size and you cannot find those or at least a drill bit or anything close enough that size so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this aluminum tube that i've got i have taken a dremel tool and i have just sanded the inside with a sanding drum to bring it to a somewhat of a sharp edge and then i have taken a line level something that you would typically hang on a piece of string for construction and I've taped it here to this tube. The purpose of the level is so that once you put the tube here in the hole, since we have these plywood spars that are inside of the stabilizer to dictate our forward or back movement, all we really need to worry about is our up and down movement. And since the airplane is leveled side to side, as long as the tube and the, the bubble level stays level, our tubes should theoretically meet 
in the center from where we cut the other side. So I'm gonna hold it here and level and instead of trying to do large cuts all at once, I'm just gonna go very slowly initially, making sure to try and keep that level or keep the tube as level as possible. see sticking out over there we got a tube poking out and this one's actually level so that's a good sign all right I'm gonna take my actual tube the carbon one that I plan to use I'm gonna put this through here and while it hangs out I'm going to take the other rib that got knocked off and make sure it still fits make sure it's still in position which it's off just a wee little bit but no surprise there it's uh we can take care of that once we start oversizing that hole so okay so i've got the holes here and this rib block off plate all slightly oversized what I basically did is I just took that same tube I was using to uh, cut the hole through the foam I just wrapped a little bit of 80 grit sticky back sandpaper to it twisted it through the plywood to just oversize that just a little bit and then I just used this to go through and do sanding where I needed to in order to oversize it around the tube sockets on both sides and then there's a little piece of balsa wood from the uh, the trailing edge stock of the vertical stab that was just slightly in the way and I mean maybe an eighth of an inch like it wasn't much so I sanded that for clearance and now the wing tube sockets well I'm sorry the stab tubes and their socket slide in very very nicely all the way through now next thing we need to, need to do or that i'm going to do is i'm going to prep the stub of the horizontal stab for receiving these these rib blanks so what i'm going to do is that perma grit slotting tool that i have this is exactly six millimeters thick so it's just a smidge under a quarter of an inch but it's the exact thickness of the white plywood rib we have here for the block off plate. So I'm just gonna put the slotting tool right up against the edge of that plate. And I am just going to draw a line right along the inside edge of it. Anytime you need to bore nice smooth holes in styrofoam cores before you, uh, well at least as long as it's fairly short or just as long as your tube, 
Like for this instance, I'm going to bore the holes for the servo extension for the elevator servos. This is just a, oh, I don't know, about a 18 millimeter brass tube, somewhat sharpened on the edge. Just gonna sit here and make a little twist. Make sure in the right spot that we want. That's pretty close there. And I'm just gonna angle it where I want it to go so I can hit the original hole because this hole here does not go where the servo leads come out of the bottom of the horizontal stabilizer and the center inside the fuselage. And I can do the same thing. So use it as a drill bit so we get to where we want to go. Make my life a little bit easier. So we get to where we're going. Make that thing's pretty close. And now I'm going to grab my flashlight and I'm going to look inside the belly. And yeah, we are very close to where we got to go. A little bit of Gorilla Glue in the way. There it goes. Dig it through and a little bit further. Should be pretty close to where we want it to be. Let's see. Yeah, I can see it through the opposite side. All right. Now we'll just twist it out. And what you're left with is a reasonably nice hole. There you go. Nice and fairly smooth inside, so you don't have to worry about your servo leads getting stuck. So. See ya. Okay, so next step here on making these horizontal stabs removable. What I have done is I've came and taken just some painter's tape, just masking tape, put it right here along the edge on the top because I'm going to actually tack glue, which this is already tack glued in place. And then I traced the shape of the airfoil stub onto the plywood. I did that on both sides. This side I've already taken off and trimmed. So once this is cut to shape, what I also did before I cut it is I laminated the two ribs on the edges together that make the stub and then the stab itself. So and then with these here. Okay, we're getting ready to put in some hard points here inside the foam All core. Right. This is so since we don't really have plans, we don't have templates for anything to figure out the shape of this stuff. Just gonna put the block up here against the airfoil. Then I'm really just gonna trace the shape and it's gonna leave a more or less that line on it. And then I'm gonna go trim it on the bandsaw. This will give us the a nice matching contour of the top skin for the inside. Now you're probably thinking, well, you can't really, how are you gonna figure that out? So if we match it to the bottom of the top skin and we draw it, it's going to be too thick. So here I'm just going to drop it down approximately the thickness of the wing skin or the, the stab skin, which is about an eighth of an inch. And then I'm just going to trace it that way. Since the Gorilla Glue foams up, we don't have to be 100% accurate with it. So in this case, close enough is good enough. And here we see so, that is going to be 90% perfect. Good enough in my book. And you can I need see. to decide the total thickness of what I want that to be like. But since the shape of it is really not going to change any, just the depth of it, I'm going to put that block back in position. And then I'm just going to mark the line here across the back edge of it and we know the foam in this area right here that needs to get cut out so i'll use a just a flathead screwdriver to go around 
and start digging that out slowly. Start up here at the top skin. I'm just gonna push straight down with it. And just work my way around the perimeter, compressing it towards the center of where we want to remove. Thank you. 